Here's an example ladder logic program that one of our students has created. And there's just a little issue in here that I wanted to point out, which hopefully will help out everybody. It's to do with using the same address with multiple outputs. So that's on the right side here. We've got M1 as the address being used three times. And it seems like a good idea to some people when you're trying to achieve the same thing with each of these lines of logic. So in this case, it's three different lines and each line should be causing a different way to make this reset action operate. But what actually happens is even if this first one, if that one turns on, as the PLC goes through the logic, if the last one down the bottom, if that one is turned off, then it's always going to overwrite the ones that went before it. So it's actually only ever the last one in the line that is going to influence the status of this M1 when we finish this, the PLC scan cycle through this program. It's finished down here, and in the next scan cycle it goes back up to the top. And on the left side we can see M1's used to reset the counter. So the way that this program's been made, it's only ever going to be this last one that's going to be able to reset the counter. A way to get around that, if I could just grab a different color, a way to get around that is to use some different names. So we'll keep using M1 for the first output up there. We'll say M2 for this one, and M3 for the third one. Now that we've got three different memory bits, we know that they're okay, they're not going to overwrite each other, but we do need to combine them to be able to go back to this original one up here. So let's call this now M0. It's going to be a combination of the 1, 2, and 3 that we did. So because we want any one of those three to be able to activate this reset, so it's our M0 that's going to get activated. Sorry, that should be an output coil that's curved. We're going to have parallel branches with our three contacts here. And that's M1 and M2 and M3. So by doing it this way, if any one of those three turns on, it's going to turn on M0 to cause the reset to work. And the only way to make M0 turn off is that all of these reset commands have to be off. So generally that's how we want our reset to operate. That any one of the conditions will make the reset happen. And to be able to stop trying to do the reset, we have to go back to the state where none of our conditions are trying to make the reset happen. So it's a pretty simple change to make to change the addresses of these ones so we can keep M1 and in here we're changing the number to M2 here we're changing to M3 and we just add one more line of logic at the bottom and you'd add in a comment as well saying this is my combination of three different reset commands to have one master reset at the end. So hopefully this quick explanation is enough to give you a hand help you out about how to avoid these problems that you can get with your PLC ladder logic. See you next time.